Now, a team led by Ag Research has been funded to develop a new test for COVID-19 that can detect the presence of the infection earlier than current tests and before a person has any symptoms. The Ag Research scientists will be joined by colleagues from fellow Crown Research Institute ESR and the University of Otago on this project. The project's going to focus on finding a molecule pattern that signals a human body's response to the virus causing COVID-19. The research has the potential for much earlier detection of cases at the border or in the community where there is a risk of spread before a person knows they are infected. This is huge news. Now joining us now to discuss is Ag Research Scientist Dr Sandeep Gaptu. Sandeep, uh, can you firstly explain how the Agricultural Science-led Institute decided to even start looking into this? Yeah, um, it's quite interesting because... Um, in 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 um, animal health, we actually see these two streams go hand in hand because whatever we learn from animal health perspective can be applied to human health. Because um, in terms of immune response, we share a lot of things with um, with animal in um, and also um, what we have um, grown into um, another stream, what we call one health, where. Uh, we are not only looking towards animal health, but also to human health. So the way we learn things from human health, we apply to human health. And that's where we really got into um, um, into human health. So taking as Yoni's disease, the example, where we looked for um, different, these small molecules, as you just mentioned, and how these molecules we can harness to um, detect early infection um, of Yoni's disease in cattle. So we applied the same approach to see if we can detect COVID-19 in human. And that's where we applied for this fund, which was um, released by MB, uh, which was mainly focusing on, on response to COVID-19. <laughs> Yep, so $250 from MB, uh, this COVID-19 Innovation Acceleration Fund. Uh, of course, around the world, everybody's racing for that. Um, could you explain how the current testing methods of detecting the RNAs, um, and just uh, from a science perspective in a layman's term, uh, is important to what you're looking for finding that pattern in humans? Yep. So what happens in, in current testing for COVID-19, what um, scientists are doing um, in the lab, they're actually detecting um, the RNA from the virus itself. So that RNA actually comes from the virus. So once a person is infected um, with the COVID-19, it gets into the lungs of um, the patients, it multiplies there, and then the um, 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 diagnostic people will detect viral RNA. But in our case, what we are saying is that we are not detecting the viral RNA itself, but as soon as the virus infects the lung cells, it's our body or human body which will produce a response. And response to that, our body produces what are called microRNA, very small molecules and we are targeting those molecules to detect the infection. And just um, to um, tell you is that what happens is when the virus actually infects people, it would take few days for replication or to multiply. And during that time, people are asymptomatic, so they do not show any symptoms, but they can still transmit the disease. So our aim is to actually detect the infection at that very early stage because body will respond as soon as the virus comes in in terms of various molecules. So microRNA would be one of the molecules which we are targeting to detect this disease. How long will it take to scale up uh, once you do find this particular test uh, is significantly um, a, game, a game changer? Yeah. So at the moment, um, when we got this money from um, MB, we proposed the project in several stages. So they have only found the first stages, first stage, which is um, to develop or to actually see the test if we can detect that uh, microRNA pattern in um, um, 
human cells infected with the virus. And once we confirm that, yes, we can actually identify a pattern which allows us to um, confirm the presence of the virus, then we will move on to human studies. We will have samples from humans and then we will um, develop a test. So in terms of the timeline, we are still looking at at least um, one to two years before we will have a full, uh, fully developed test. Because one of the limitation in, in any of those studies is okay, you can develop the test, but you have to validate on um, clinical samples. Mm -hmm. And as you know, in a way, it's good that we do not have many COVID cases in New Zealand, but from scientific point of view, um, we need those clinical samples to validate the test. Mm -hmm. So we might have to go somewhere else. What is the significance of finding um, a, a pattern between what you've done with Yoni's that you can achieve with humans and that could rapidly explode across multiple different other virus uh, and disease early detection? Yeah, I mean, the approach which we took for Yoni's disease can be applied to different diseases and that's what we are doing with COVID-19. However, each disease is different and the body's immune response will um, uh, respond differently. So for each disease, we have to look for a specific pattern, okay, and then we have to um, validate, yes, this pattern is actually only to this disease and not to other. So if I give you an example, if we are targeting the COVID-19 disease and we want to identify a pattern for COVID-19, we have to make sure that it's very different to common flu. Mm. You know, so we, we don't want to say, OK, we take a sample from a, per, uh, from a person and we do a test by detecting these microRNA. And it turned out to be, well, that person only had a common flu and not COVID-19. So we have to be really, really careful and in, in finding those very specific patterns to particular disease. And in this case, to COVID-19. Hmm. And when we say rapid, how rapid? Sorry? When we say rapid, how quick is the turnaround time of detection? So in terms of um, turnaround time, at the moment, it will still be pretty much same to what um, um, the current test is being done. But our ultimate aim is to, once we identify this pattern, we will um, apply other technologies where you can detect um, the RNA as little as in 30 minutes. Hmm. So that's our target, um, but that will be the, the next stages of the project. Um, and that will really um, allow us to deploy this test on, on borders because you can imagine if travelers are coming in, you can deploy the test, you get the test done. If they are negative, they, can, they don't have to go to quarantine, you can release them. But if they do come positive, they go to quarantine for 14 days. So with this test, we are really looking into um, um, if, if successful, can that be um, one, um, um, allow us better contact tracing? And also, can it help us to minimize or probably uh, totally end the unnecessary quarantine measures for the travelers coming to New Zealand? Wow. Um, congratulations on your successful funding and uh, I believe that we need to give you a, a bucket loads more money because this is seriously <laughs> considerably yeah, a yeah. game changer. Oh. Um, Hopefully, yes. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ag Research Scientist Dr. Sandeep Gup, too, joining us there with regards to the news that Ag Research are on the race for a COVID 19 rapid test. This is Sarah's Country.